We're now joined via Zoom by Nzali Matebula, a lecturer in the Department of International Relations. Nzali, thank you so much for your time. Perhaps let me repeat my question. So in light of, you know, South Africa facing so much pressure around its nonpartisan stance, um, and, and then you hear, of course, of this telephone uh, conversation between the two leaders, what can we read into this, particularly as we told that they were, in fact, discussing the Russia-Ukraine war? Uh, afternoon, Unati. Thanks for having me and to the viewers at home. Uh, so, firstly, I'd like to say that it was much anticipated as South Africa is seeking ways to divest strategies in how they can actually solve this whole dilemma that they're currently facing with the Rome Statute, but also uh, being a part of the BRICS block and with the summit coming up. So then I could say that it's it's in a way of diversing strategies of how we can move forward because I believe that we are one month away from um, the BRICS summit in August. Mm. And so talk to us then about, you know, of course, this African um, uh, leadership team that will then be sent, you know, for these peace uh, discussions and to facilitate these peace discussions between Russia and Ukraine. Uh, and just looking at what the interventions that have been made by um, some leaders in the African continent, what are we likely to see, you know, during the course of these uh, talks? Well, most definitely when it comes to security efforts and peace mechanisms in Africa, we can attest that many of the African countries tend to um, not really achieve much, but rather uh, diverse strategies and that's where it ends with the document. But then at the same time, I would like to say that within a space of international relations, this actually um, reflects on sovereign capacity by African leaders to actually contribute towards the global um, peace resolution mechanisms as we are facing this Russia-Ukraine war. So for me, honestly, it is efforts and uh, from African leaders and African leaders actually exercising their independence as African, I mean, as sovereign states and in participating in this anarchist um, international relations space in how they can actually contribute towards global peace. Of course but we then know. when it comes to what we can expect, we can, oh, yes. Of course, we know, uh, uh, sorry, um, uh, Anzali, for that. Of course, we know that uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa has spoken to uh, Putin before. In fact, uh, immediately after that conversation, he then spoke to Ukraine's uh, President uh, Zelensky. Uh, what was interesting, though, um, in that conversation with uh, Volodymyr Zelensky is that he did warn, you know, um, against arming the aggressor. So it, it would be hoped that, you know, conversations following, um, you know, the delegation to Russia would then extend that conversation uh, to Ukraine almost in a similar fashion. That is very true. That is very true. So I do believe that um, when it comes to peace resolutions and seeing how long this um, a war has taken place, we can only hope for the best in terms of ensuring that there is ceasefire. So then in, in, many, in many respects, you can expect that, uh, that, that we can paint a number of scenarios whereby we can actually only aggravate this war further. But then at the same time, I do believe that African leaders have diverse strategies or they have something up their sleeves that can actually um, gear towards a peace resolution and ensuring the ceasefire of this war. Uh Again, uh, you know, the, the conversation uh, does put a spotlight on the upcoming BRICS uh, summit. Uh, we obviously heard from the minister and the presidency this afternoon confirming that, in fact, um, the BRICS summit will happen in August and will happen in this country, given the fact that a lot of people were speculating uh, how to avert the Putin matter, maybe moving uh, the BRICS summit to another country where South Africa could then um, host it there, uh, with Putin then also, um, you know, coming to the party. Yes, of course, uh, I, I did read up on that, that maybe there might be possibilities or prospects of the BRICS summit moving at least to India or China, because those countries are not Rome statutes. But then at the same time, I do believe that it goes back to the drawing board of international law itself. Sometimes when law is not applied uniformly, um, equally to everyone it becomes hard for others to actually apprehend and litigate such laws so then i do believe that if it comes to shove and push whereby uh, we'll have the BRICS summit here we can only foretell what will happen 
when the Russian president comes and if there will be an execution of the warrant itself.